Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job. And it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. cooled up after all that hot weather, didn't it, Mr. Dillon? Uh-huh. It sure turned out to be a pretty nice day. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of makes a man lazy, though, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, look at that, that little old dog out in the street there. Huh? He sure is playful, ain't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. If he had any sense, he'd go lie down in the shade somewhere. Well, he's just a pup. Uh-huh. Oh, oh. Now, he better leave them horses be. He's going to get kicked. Well, yeah, he's got to learn sometime. Go on. Go on, scat. Go on, get away from here, you mutt. He's going to make that fellow mad. Go on. Oh, I'll fix you. Hey. Why, he shot him. Well, what a mean, miserable thing to do. That little old pup wasn't hurting nothing. No, he sure wasn't. It's a marshal. Yeah. Well, what do you want? Get on off those horses. What? Do it! Right now. All right. Now, what's your trouble, marshal? I'll take your gun, mister. No, you won't. I'm not even going to argue with you. Make a move. Here, Chester, hold it. Yes, sir. All right, I'll take yours, too. Sure, Marshal. I ain't gonna try nothing. Hold up now. What's this all about, anyway? What's your name, mister? Walt Gorman. Mm Mm-hmm. And what's yours? Hakes. Jod Hakes. All right. I don't allow shooting and dodge. Well... Ain't no reason to take our guns. I ought to bend them across your heads. Come on, Chester. Hey, wait a minute. When do we get them guns back? Tomorrow noon, when you leave town. But we ain't figuring on leaving. Oh, never mind him, Hicks. He can't run us out. By golly, you are too, Mr. Dillon. I will, Chester. Look at that poor little dog. I wonder whose tears. I don't know. It belongs to some kid around here. Uh, I'll carry it around back to jail. Maybe the kid will want to bury it himself. Yeah, why don't you do that? That Gorman sure is a mean one. Well, I can get mean too, Chester. And I got a feeling I may have to before I'm through with him. <laughs> Change to L&M. 
Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you all the flavor you want. The rich, exciting flavor you get only from L&M. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. You know who that little raggedy dog belonged to? There wasn't no kid at all. It was an old fella called Pony Thompson. Pony Thompson? Yes, sir. He come in here a while ago. He heard we had him. He's out back now burying him. I never heard of Pony Thompson. Neither did I. He's a real nice old fellow, though. Oh, kindly funny looking. He looks at you from under them scraggly eyebrows like an old gray wolf. But with... That's him. You'll see. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Uh, no, I ain't no Mr. Pony's good enough. Uh, this is Marshal Dillon. Uh, how do, Marshal? Uh, I'm sorry about your dog. Eh, uh, well, I shouldn't have brung him. Town's bad enough for humans. Where are you from, Pony? I haven't seen you in Dodge before. Uh, I don't seek out no town but once a year. I move around on the prairie, Marshal. Uh, sometimes I go into the mountains. I just can't stand four walls and a roof. It's like being in jail. Well, what are you doing here now? Once a year, I get drunk. What? And that's why I come to town to do it. I figure if I got to get drunk, I got to be cooped up in some saloon. But, you know, just walking down your street there, I feel kind of hog-tied. Oh, my goodness. Hey, uh, Marshal. Yep, honey. Who shot my dog? I... A couple of men who just rode into town. I'll have to know their names. Why, you want them to pay you for the dog? No, no, no. It ain't money I'm after. I didn't think so. You know, I got a heavy old rifle down at the stable with my gatherings. I figured to go kind of beat them half to death with it. Now, that wouldn't help you, Pony. You, uh, you ain't going to tell me their names? No, Pony, I'm not. Well. Where are you going? I can't get drunk unless I start drinking, Kenny. No. But I'll find out who shot my dog. Don't you worry. Your friend Pony Thompson's doing pretty well at the bar over there, Matt. That's his second bottle he's working on. He sure keeps to himself, doesn't he? Uh, a man who drinks alone is usually peaceful anyway. Yeah. Now, hurry it up, bartender. We ain't got all night. Now, who's that pair? Just came in. Oh. Uh, well, you know him, Matt? Yeah. One of them's the man who shot Pony's dog I was telling you about. Hmm. Oh. Well, he looks like the kind... Get it? I don't know what Sam wants. Hey, Kitty! I'd better go see you. I'll be right back. Yeah, sure, Kitty. Hey, look at this one, Hicks. Uh, she's pretty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, girlie, buy you a drink. No, thanks. Oh, what do you want, Sam? Never mind about him. <laughs> Come on, have a drink. I said no. I said yes. Come on, girl, loosen up now. Tell me something, mister. Do you have to be awful brave to shoot puppy dogs? What? It must take a real man to do that, huh? I just ought to slap your face in for you. I wouldn't try that, gun. It's a marshal. Now what? 
You get out of here. Now you take Hicks with you. You sure like having your own way in this here town, don't you? I sure do. Now you get moving. Come on, Gorman. We don't want no trouble. Get All right. I sure am getting a belly full of that. What a hero. Yeah. But you know, Kitty, I wish you hadn't mentioned the dog. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. I, I forgot. Oh, uh, hey, evening, Marshal. Ah, uh, hello, Pony. So, that, that fuller's name was Gorman, huh? <laughs> Got a mean face, too, ain't he? Now, look here, Pony. Oh, don't, don't, don't you worry. I ain't gonna follow him, Marshal. No siree, Bob. I got me this here bottle to finish. Yeah, I'm gonna get drunk tonight, remember? Well, I guess it doesn't matter after all, Matt, huh? Well, I hope not, Kitty. But I'm not so sure. Oh, my. Side meat, fried potatoes, harmony grits and sorghum, and a cup of lye. Matt, there was a mighty poor breakfast, if I do say so. Well, then I'm glad I didn't treat you to it, Doc. Oh, look who's in it. If you ever treated me to breakfast, I'd be so dumbfounded I, I couldn't complain. Mr. Dillon! <laughs> Mr. Dillon! Huh? Oh, it's Chester. At the stable door there. You too, Doc. Hurry up! Me? What's he got, a sick horse in there? Now, he's got something, Doc. He looks pretty worried. Oh, Chester's always worried. If it isn't money, it's women. Moss Trimmick went to the office looking for you. Now, what's the trouble, Chester? They've been a killing. What? That fellow Walt Gorman, he got his throat cut in here. Moss found him laying in one of the stalls. Pony Thompson done it. How do you know? Well, he was right in there with him. He still is. We tied him up with a rope. Of course, he was passed out drunk when Moss found him. But he come too fast enough and we sluiced some water on him. How could he kill a man when he was passed out? I don't know, Doc, but he was all spattered with blood and the knife was laying there right there by his hand. There he is. Oh, Marshal. Marshal, make him turn me loose. That's Gorman under the saddle blanket back there. All right, I'll take a look, but I don't know how much good you Oh, please get me loose, Marshal, please. I, I just can't stand this. All right, on time, Chester. All right, sir. I, I didn't kill nobody. The knife's in that board right next to you, Mr. Dillon. Oh. Pony, is this your knife? Yeah, 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 sure, it's mine. But I, I didn't use it on nobody. It was laying right by his hand. Well, then somebody put it there. Gorman's dead all right, Matt. Four or five hours. He took a knife in his back and then had his throat cut. There. Yeah. Well, I... I wouldn't do a thing like that, Marshal. I wouldn't have thought so, Pony. It's true. Oh, sure, I found him later after you left the Long Branch, but well, I only swore at him a little for, for shooting my poor pup. I'm going to have to lock you up, Pony. Oh, no, please, Marshal, don't do that. Please don't. I got no choice. I tell you, I'd just go crazy. You put me in jail. I told you how I Chester, am. Chester, take him down. Huh? Come on, Pony, oh, let's no. get going. Oh, please don't. Not jail, You please. should have thought about that before you oh. killed Garmin. Now, come on. I'd rather get shot. I, I'd, I'd rather die. You ain't going to die. Now, walk along. <laughs> Hello, Marshal. I've been waiting for you. Hello, Hicks. I'd seen Chester a while ago taking Pony Thompson into the jail here. Uh, did he tell you what happened? He sure did. I didn't want to see Gorman. Not after what that old man did to him. Come out into the office, Hicks. Oh, Mr. Dillon. Huh. Chester! What's the matter? What's the matter? You sick or something? He hit me. What? Oh. Where's Pony Thompson? 
that's what I'm telling you. He hit me with that stool in there. You mean he got away? I turned my back to go out of that cell. That's all I remember. And he's been gone about 20 minutes. Well, let's find him. Standing around here is doing no good. We'll find him, Hicks. Oh, but I know where he went. You do where? Well, in the stable there, he was mumbling about a hideout he knows down by the Arkansas somewhere. You feel up to riding, Chester? You bet I do. And I'm coming, too. I'll shoot that old devil on sight. It's a good thing I took your gun, Hicks. But you're coming with us, all right, just to make sure you don't find another one. Yes, have an L&M. Enjoy a really modern cigarette. A cigarette that gives you all the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the flavor you get through the modern miracle of the L&M Miracle Tip. Through the pure white Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive, live modern. Smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Get L&M today. day, Mr. Dillon. We can get moving again directly. You could be 30 miles from here by now. Well, you can't track a man in the dark, Hakes. We've done the best we could. Blackest night I ever seen. It, Marshal, I want you to give me a gun today. You're awful anxious to shoot him down, aren't you, Hakes? It's to keep him from shooting me. Probably armed by now. Oh, sure he is. There's lots of guns laying along the banks of the Arkansas. I'm cold. I'm going to walk around a little and stretch my legs. Don't you get lost, Sonny. Oh. Why don't you try keeping quiet? Your voice itches my ears. Hex, <laughs> tell me something. How long were you and Gorman partners? About a year. Why? Yeah, I just wondered. You gonna let me have a gun today? I wouldn't trust you with a buggy. Would now, you got no cause to say that. I want Pony Thompson alive. He'd be no good to me dead. What do you mean? Well, I didn't get a chance to talk to him, for one thing. Hey, Mr. Dillon! Yeah, what? There's a little old cave right up here. Go crawl in it. Maybe it'll fall on you. He sure bothers me. You kind of bother him. I ain't done nothing to him. Mr. Dillon, come here, quick! What? Yeah, what is it, Chester? There's a man in this cave. Ah. It's old Pony Thompson. Well, drag him out. I, I did. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, make a torch out of some of those dry weeds, Chester. I can't see much here. Yes, sir. What is it, Marshal? Somebody kill him? I don't know, Hakes. Just stay out of the way. Doggone it. You treat me like I was dirt. I've had enough of that. Come on, Chester. Hurry up. Yes, sir. I got it. Here, let me get lit. I don't feel blood anywhere. Yeah. Ain't gonna burn long, though. Hold it near his head. I don't see nothing. No, wait a minute. Hold it closer. Huh? Now, down here. There ain't a mark on him. 
Yes, there is. Hmm? See those two little punctures on his neck there? Mm, yes, sir. All right, Chester. Well, I guess Pony meant what he said about not liking jail. What do you mean? We've been sitting right down there in front of his cave for about eight hours now. He could have hollered for help, but he didn't. Help for what? There was a rattlesnake in that cave. That's what them marks on his neck was. He got bit. Rather than face jail, he stayed in there and died. I don't get to feeling so sorry for him. He stuck Gorman in the back and cut his throat, didn't he? Yeah, Hicks. That's exactly what happened to Gorman. What are you looking at me like that for? Chester. Yes, sir? Did you tell Hicks that Gorman got knifed in the back? No, sir. All I said was he got his throat cut. And poor old Pony Thompson died for nothing. I don't know why you killed your partner, and I don't much care, but we'll find out. After we get Pony buried proper. Now, look here, Marshal. And you'll dig the grave, Hicks. And you'll dig it deep. The old man deserves that much from you. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. In a recent study, a noted traffic expert estimates that inadequate highways and resultant traffic jams cost the American economy billions of dollars every year and suggests that the cost of modernizing our roads would quickly be regained in time saved. Discussing motor accidents, this same expert suggests that legislation may be needed to curb the speed of our powerful automobiles before they ever leave the factories. This is a controversial question on which the experts disagree. But all traffic experts agree on one thing. Common sense cannot be legislated into the automobile driver. He has to learn it by himself. Anger, bravado, and the spirit of competition often are expressed on the highway by excessive speeding, disregard of traffic signs and signals, and other risky maneuvers. Psychologists sum it up by saying that careless drivers are emotionally immature. Put more bluntly, it means that careless driving is kid stuff. This has been a CBS Radio public service announcement. You know, when a high plains woman was looking for a husband, cow hands used to laugh and say, she's throwing a wide loop. Well, next week a woman catches her man right